Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the ninth of 15 videos in the Mobile Weather App series. A link to the app website is in the description below, as well as links to the other 14 videos in this series. In this video, we'll continue with the MVVM design pattern and create a forecast list view model. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get notification when new videos in the series and others are released. If you like what you see, give it a thumbs up. And if you feel inclined to support my work, you can always buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description below. No pressure though. Now that we have our view model for our forecast items, we can create a new file called forecast list view model. This time, however, it'll be a class as it has to conform to the observable object protocol. We're going to use this model instead of our local state variables in content view. And we can make them published so that whenever they change, our content view, which will have an instance of this view model, will refresh. Back in forecast list view model, create a published property called forecasts. And it's going to be an array of our forecast view model. And we'll assign it as an empty array. Next, we can create a regular property that we'll call location, and it'll be a string initialized as an empty string. Now, the beauty of this is that we can now take the getWeather function out of our content view. So let's cut it out from there. And don't worry about the breaking code. We'll fix that. And we'll paste that into our forecast list view model file. Let's remove this commented code now as we no longer need it. And since location is a property of this class, we don't need it as a property of our function signature. Now, CL geocoder requires that we import core location. And in the success switch, our published property is called forecasts with an S. And it's an array of the forecast view model objects where forecast return is all of our data. What we want is just the forecast.daily objects, which is an array, and we can use the array mapping method to map it to a forecast view model object. So self.forecasts equal forecast.daily map and forecast view model, where we can pass in this $0, which is the instance of our forecast. Now this will be forcing an update of the UI because it's changing the published property. And since the API service is being executed on the background thread, we'll need to bring it back to our main thread. So we're going to embed it within a dispatchq.main.async function. Now back in content view, I can remove the import of core location here because it's no longer needed. We move that to our list view model. We can replace these top lines before the body as we're moving this responsibility to the forecast list view model as well. And to do this, we'll create a single property that I'll call forecast list VM. And it's initialized as an instance of the forecast list view model. And it's decorated with the state object property wrapper. We now have access to all of the properties of our list view model. The binding to location in our text field has now been moved to the location property of our view model. Similarly, the buttons action calls the function from our view model without the parameter. We no longer have an optional forecast, so we can remove the if let and the else clause with the spacer. And our view model is initialized with an empty array, so our list will fill the rest of our view. The list no longer iterates over forecast.daily, it iterates over forecast list VM's forecast array. And the unique property is the new forecast view model's day property. We have not only flattened our nested model, but we are also returning strings for all of our text views. So the day variable here represents a single object of our forecast view model struct. For the date, we can now just reference the day property for the day variable. 
I'm going to leave the image here still for another day, but the description is now the day.overview. For high and low, we can just use day.high and day.low. And similarly for clouds and probability of precipitation, it's just day.clouds and day.pop. And finally for humidity, it's just day.humidity. Let's test this now. Hmm, not looking too good in Vancouver. How about Lahaina? Rain there too. Well, might as well stay home. One more thing though. Let's change this H stack from a top alignment to a center alignment. Let's check Lahaina once more. I like the centering of the image placeholder better. It's still raining though. 